Good morning, Mikhail. Good morning. Um, will these players be motivated for the re remaining four games of the Premier League season? And how do you, as manager, ensure that they will be? Well, first of all, um, you have to go through the pain that caused uh, last night's um, disappointment. And after that, we have that responsibility and we have to be professional. We know that we have four games uh, to play, which is still things to define. And, um, and the best way to do that is on Sunday, go out there and show how much we care, how painful that was, and win the football match. Do the players feel that pain? And will they feel that responsibility over the next four games? They do feel the pain when you look at um, the state of that dressing room. Um, it was sad because they put so much into it. They tried to go through every obstacle that we had in the competition and, um, and around. And, um, and this is a based, result-based sport. And an inch can define success or failure. And it happened. If that ball goes in from over yesterday or the other two big chances that we had, we are talking about something different. But unfortunately, you are not. And with the same context, with the same conditions, with the same game, but the different results. And, um, and this is what we have to accept because unfortunately, that's the, the beauty and as well the difficulties of this sport. Many Arsenal supporters this morning, Michaela, are fearing that they may have to get used to being a mid-table side and, and being out of Europe. Do, do you share those concerns? I understand those concerns because when you are out uh, of the Champions League for five years, um, it's not just um, a casualty, it's a trend. And uh, there are facts to support that trend. And as well, the final years, how it was achieved the Champions League as well. So there are things to change, that's for sure, because no one is going to accept that at this football club. I'm not going to accept that. And the fans, they're not going to accept that. So we all have to push together to achieve uh, something very different. So, so could we explore that a little bit? Because you're absolutely right. This is a trend. And I suppose as, as a manager, you do not want to be in a position where this trend continues. No. So why? Why is the trend going the way it is? I think it's uh, things to analyze more internally. I'm sorry. Um, we have done that. There are things that we cannot discuss here. Um, I take full responsibility for my part, for sure, since I arrived here. What I have tried to do, um, giving my life, my best ability, investing every <laughs> drop of energy that I have emotionally to support everything that is being going around um, uh, with my knowledge, with the staff, with all the players that they are trying to contribute, with all the club to give our best, but um, so far it's not been enough. And this is when the question mark comes, why is not enough? It's just a thing, it's the, the manager, it's many other stuff. What is it? And, um, and then this is football. Again, I repeat myself, last night, double goes in, you win one L, you are in the final, and it's a different world. But today, that world doesn't look very nice. Can I ask you, tactically, in terms of what you're trying to achieve as a football man and as a coach, is there a problem, Mikel, in conveying what you want to achieve with your styles and systems to this particular group of players? It takes, um, it takes time and it takes a lot of specificity in what you want. And uh, I said many times, we are not there. We are not able to execute that consistently enough throughout games or consistently enough in consecutive games. And uh, that comes with practice, that comes with recruitment, that comes changing some mentality. It's um, a lot of things that uh, have to be in place because as well the level in the league has excelled to a level that um, it didn't exist in the past. And um, they've done so well with time and resources and obviously with a lot of clever people making big decisions. And a final question from me. I mean, you, you can't have had much sleep after last night, but when you're, when you're leaving the ground and getting a, the short amount of sleep you would have and waking up this morning, do you, do you ever question whether you are the right man to lead Arsenal out of this predicament? What I felt last night is 
it was uh, a deep pain because um, the moment the club is at the moment with everything that's been through in the last um, months, I had the feeling that uh, if we could take the team to the final, it could be a great turning point. And I felt that responsibility and I was so eager to, to achieve that because I, th I, I knew that it could be a defining moment. And not being able to achieve it, um, it's been really tough, personally, obviously. Um, I know that we have disappointed a lot of people as well, and um, that really hurts because we want to give uh, the best to everything, to everybody. But what I'm thinking in my mind clear, that if we are able to do what we want to do, I have no doubt that we're going to achieve it. If not, I wouldn't start here, Jonathan. Thank you, Mikel. Thank you. Good, good luck. Thanks, Jonathan. Rob from Arsenal. Hi, Mikel. Hi, Rob. Um, you'd have been through other painful moments, of course, as a player, as a manager. How long can you allow yourself to sort of feel that pain and, and harness it, if you like? And how, how quickly do you have to just try and forget it, as, as difficult as that is? You have no time because we have a game on Sunday. We have a training session uh, this morning and it has to be by today. When you leave that training ground, most of it, it has to be out of the system. I think you have to leave some of it in your system and use it the right way as an energy driver in the game on Sunday. You spoke last night about how you were devastated, all the players were devastated. I think the last player to leave the pitch was Emil Smith-Rowe. On a, on a really disappointing night, he was one of the real bright, bright sparks on the team. How important is he for the future of the club? Players like him who, who want that responsibility on the pitch, even at, at 20 years old. Well, they took the responsibility and the second half, um, they really tried. He had uh, a big chance um, to score. And I think that way he was feeling responsible, which is a, a good reaction from him. But uh, we have to bear in mind that those players have never played a game like that, and it's the first experience, and they have to go through that, and um, and they will learn. Is it is one of Emil's biggest qualities his, his bravery in terms of he, he constantly demands the ball. He's not afraid to try things. Yeah, because if you if you don't have this quality, you cannot play at the at the highest level. I think it doesn't matter how old you are, but um, it has to be in your system. It has to be part of you that you want to be able to take the ball anywhere under any conditions and under any kind of pressure. And even at these sort of these moments where things are not looking so good and it's, it's tough, knowing that you have players like Emil and Bakaya Saka, that must give you confidence that, that things can get better soon. It gives me a lot of confidence because um, they show what they can do. It's true that playing a semi-final at this level is a, is a different story, but uh, as well they need the right surrounding around them to grow um, without putting too much on them.